It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, folks, uh, the first chart that I posted into Tiger TV today is the VIX index going back uh, the last eight years. And as you can see, we're making seven-year lows now. It's as low as it's been um, in a very, very long time, at least on this chart right here. It's, it's well over eight years, and it goes back even farther than that. Uh, there were several commentators on uh, Bloomberg today that were talking about the uh, VIX index as being totally worthless and it should be delisted. <laughs> I don't know what about that, but usually when they talk about that, the VIX has a tendency to uh, give them a wake-up call. But we'll wait and see if it's going to happen uh, this time or not. It's still, you know, way uh, way late in the bullish game, in my opinion. But we'll have to uh, we'll have to wait and see. We have a very interesting cycle phenomenon that started uh, on Sunday. Uh, we have two Pesavento index states. We had one on Sunday, the 22nd. And we have another one on June the 26th, which is Thursday, the day before the new moon. And these P-index dates were the brainchild of my mentor, Dr. Ruth Miller. Uh, basically, it's a bell-shaped curve that shows you that 95% of the time, uh, there are either 14 aspects or more in the sky or four or less in the sky. And that just gives you a probability that there's going to be a trend change in stocks a uh, very high probability. It's in the neighborhood of 75%, but it's certainly not perfect, but nothing is. But that's something that uh, I watch you know, quite a bit. And we have two of these within four days of each other, which is uh, a very, very unusual event. I'm particularly interested in the one uh, coming in on Thursday, the 26th, along with the new moon on the 27th. That will be an interesting one to really keep an eye on. Uh, years ago, there was a gentleman named Frank Tauscher who wrote the Super Traders Almanac. Uh, Frank was a legend, and I mean he was in a legend in the same class as Amos Hostetter. He uh, was one of the best, well, he was probably one of the top three traders that I ever met, and uh, he was incredibly uh, well-versed in all kinds of cycle theory and fundamentals and all kinds of things. But one of his favorite tools was the P-Index, and uh, that was the Pesavento Index, and he, he really swore by it. He'd done his own research, and he said this was one of the better timing tools for cycles that he had found, and he used it with uh, you know, a great deal of regularity and a, and a good deal of success. So we're watching the markets very closely here on Sunday and again here on uh, Thursday to see, what, uh, see what's going to happen with these cycles. It should be something pretty significant, but folks, ever since the nothing happened on April 21st, 22nd, that was a mystery to me. So when I see these mysteries, I just shake it off you know, and go on to, to the next one. Uh, I had got an email from one of our uh, TFNN listeners over the weekend, and they asked me, you know, if I had been hurt badly, you know, during this run-up in the stock market. And, of course not. I'm not stupid enough to, to stay short uh, the whole distance. I try shorts at different times. Sometimes they work. Sometimes they don't. But when I do get in there, I, I don't risk very much, uh, you know, at all because, you know, this is a business of making money. It's not a business of being right or wrong. You can't get tied up in your position. I know I've looked at the patterns, and I keep looking at them just like I did during 1999 and 2000 and 2007 and all the other years that I've been in the market. So uh, nothing's really changed. Folks, when I went to work for Drexel Burnham Lambert in 1976, it was January of 76, I believe, uh, I was interviewed uh, by one of the directors of Drexel, um, and he basically sat down and told me, you know, I said, I, I don't have any licenses or anything. He says, we can get you the licenses. And I said, I don't know anything about the business of being a broker. He says, you know, that's really simple. We can teach you that. He says, but the one thing he said that's really important that you have to realize here is that at Drexel Burnham, we have a very, very exclusive clientele. He said, these folks are very successful in all of their endeavors, and, uh, but they're, they're accustomed to losing money. And they're accustomed to making money. What they're not accustomed to doing is losing all their money. 
So if you don't lose all their money, you're going to be just fine. He said, just lose a little bit at a time, and eventually, he says, you're going to catch something that's going to make a lot of money, and you'll be a you know golden hair boy. And I said, well, my hair is brown right now. By the time that happens, it might be gray. And I lived by that. I lived by that uh, creed because uh, any time. I had an account that dropped more than 15% of the value of what they put in. I basically stopped trading and had a meeting with a customer to make sure that you know we were on the same page as far as how much money they were going to risk. Uh, I had a few instances like that over the years, but uh, basically uh, the markets were very good to me during 76 through 82, so I had really you know no problem with that. But remember that it's not the amount of money uh, that you that you make it's the amount of money that you don't lose that's the really important thing to look at remember Bernard Baruch's famous quote don't be concerned on the return on your money be concerned on the return of your money so it's very important to do that um, there's been an article uh, on the internet uh, the last day or so about the university in um, uh, Manhattan it's a uh, I believe it's a private school, and they just lost $1.3 billion of their endowment to a hedge fund manager. And um, I can imagine uh, the feeling of woe that's going through the folks that are, you know, that made the decisions to do this. But, you know, it's nothing wrong with putting money into a hedge fund, but you've got to put a downside on it, whether it's traded by Tudor Jones or George Soros or. Uh, you know, Jimmy Schweigert or Joe Schmo, it doesn't make any difference. It's the amount of money that you're willing to risk to see if you're right. And that's what the whole key is. And that is, you know, really remember that, folks. It's not the amount of money that you're going to make. It's the amount of money that you don't lose. Uh, one of the other stories that was very funny, one that was very uh, memorable to me about, uh, about Drexel Burnham is they had, um, we had 22 retail brokers uh, on, the, on the ground floor, the floors two, three, and four, uh, on the building on Rodeo Drive at Wilshire was uh, the Milken operation, but the first floor was the retail operation. I had uh, uh, four offices in the back for myself and the three brokers that um, did the commodities for for Drexel, and um, we all had meetings. Uh, we didn't attend the usual meetings because we were just a you know just a very small group, and you know it was uh, we did a lot of business, but it was just a small group, so we didn't attend the the big the big uh, the big meetings and um, one of the meetings uh, I remember a Drexel a person came in and a, a young a young broker was there who was having a really rough time and uh, the Drexel uh, uh, I think it was one of the directors it wasn't Tubby Burnham but it was somebody way up into the way up into the food chain I can't remember which one it was but he said that that if if you get he said remember he said if you had a a, a stockbroker. He said that called you up and said, hey, let's buy this stock at $22 a share, and I think it's going to go to 75 And he said that's what all stockbrokers do. They call up and they give a story. He said, but if you get a call from the stockbroker that calls up and says, hey, let's buy this stock at 22 and if it goes to 20 and a half, let's get out of it and we'll take a loss. And he said, that's the person you want to handle your account because he's understanding what the risk is involved in trading. He said it's not the amount of the money that you make, it's the amount of money that you don't lose. So try to live by that and you'll be far better off than if you go for the pie in the sky and you know try to buy Google at 69 and hold it to uh, 1200, which doesn't happen very often, but fortunately uh, it does happen. The other thing I wanted to talk about before we get into the charts today uh, is how people handle fear in the markets because fear is the main thing that you know, makes people lose is because, uh, you know, they, they're afraid of losing their money. You know, it's good by house, good by car, good by boat, good by wife. And you don't want to get into that situation. So you remember what Tony Robbins said about fear. He used an acronym for it, F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. And that's what mostly fears are. They are false evidence of things that you think are going to happen. Robbins also talked about the greatest you know, probably the greatest um, um, frustration that we have in our lives are unfulfilled expectations. In other words, we're expecting something to happen, and it doesn't happen that way. 
And that's the real key to this, is try not to have any expectations of what's going to happen, and you won't be disappointed, whether it's with your children or the World Soccer Club or whatever, you know, uh, whatever it happens to be. Just don't get tied up with your expectations, and you won't be nearly as disappointed as you will be if you walk at a level field and not worry uh, about those particular things. That's uh, the words from Tony Robbins that I've tried to live by that have been uh, very, very helpful. I also like to tell you about a quote that relates something uh, similar to that, and that's from Erica Jung, who uh, lives in Connecticut now. And she said that you always do the thing that you fear the most because courage is an acquired taste. And I think in trading that's really, really important to become in and have the courage after losing four or five or six times in a row to be able to go in and take the next trade. If you'll remember from 1986 when they did the big uh, article about Paul Tudor Jones, uh, they were telling everyone about how he had picked the exact bottom in the bond market and they were lauding it because the bonds had exploded to 12 to 14 points higher in a matter of a few days. And Tudor Jones said to the reporter, he said, that's only part of the story. He said it should be reported as the way that it was. And he said, and he said what does that mean? He said, well, it should be reported as Paul Tudor Jones correctly picked the exact bottom of the Treasury bond market before it exploded 14 points higher, higher after failing the six previous attempts to pick the bottom. So he had tried six times to pick that bottom before it finally came. And when it did, of course, they, they, you know, they applauded his uh, telling him that. But it's, uh, you know, it's just a matter of probabilities. It's just like in baseball. You know, a guy, you know, Babe Ruth struck out, I believe, uh, 12 times for every, for every home run that he hit. Joe DiMaggio, he struck out one time for every uh, home run that he hit. So there's a, there's a big difference in probabilities when you're dealing with these. And it's the same thing in trading is you've got to think in tra- uh, probabilities. I'm going to get off my soapbox now, folks, and get back and get back to the markets because I think we're at a, a really very, very critical level. I'm going to put up this Dow monthly chart one more time because it shows the, uh, the really nice seven-year cycle that is here uh, in the uh, long-term Dow. This is the same pattern that's in the... The NASDAQ, it's the same pattern that is in the um, New York Stock Exchange Index and also the same pattern that is in the uh, S&P 500. We have a big ABCD that's completed from 2008 to where we are now, that five-year cycle. And then we have the seven-year cycles that are going from top to top and top to top. So it's a very, very symmetrical top. I know it's different this time. Everybody's telling us it's different, and it might be. But what we need to do is we need to watch to see if, in fact, this market does turn down someday. We want to try to catch some of that move. But, uh, you know, the, right now there's no reason to. The, the market just grinds its way up. There's no signs of any problems. We've, you know, we've been here before with, with the, uh, some of these levels. But the VIX index is, you know, it's, it's destroyed lows from seven years ago, folks. That's, that's a monumental monumental task to do that see we got the dow up about oh, excuse me down about 30 points the s&p is down a couple uh nasdaq is basically uh, unchanged TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different future contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now, you can receive a free two-week trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the Signal Box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now is the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Okay, folks, we've had a request to uh, take a look at the interest rate uh, markets. This is uh, the chart that I posted in was for the 30 year Treasury bond. And as you can see, we had uh, we went right up to that big ABCD pattern up at the 139 level. Uh, we broke very hard uh, down, and since that time, we've had virtually no rally, which, uh, from a technical standpoint, tells us that it's uh, you know in very very uh, serious disarray. If we take a look at the 10-year Treasury note, which is the, even the more uh, more heavily traded than the 30-year bond. In fact, I want to mention this as we get to this. If you'll hold, bear with me here one second until I can get this chart posted into uh, Tiger TV. I wanted to make a comment about this because uh, as I check the open interest each day on uh, what is happening in the markets, in other words, if there's new players leaving or, or new players coming in or old players leaving, you know, I noticed that the um, difference in the number of uh, trades or, or contracts that are outstanding. Folks, the interest rate markets, basically the notes and the bonds, uh, are basically seven times that, uh, excuse me, six times that of the equity market. In other words, the volume in, or the open interest in the uh, treasury bonds and treasury notes is six times what it is for the stock indices. Uh, the crude oil complex is three times uh, bigger than the equity index. Now, the metal index, which is a gold, silver, and copper, that's only... Uh, it's only 10% of what we do in the interest rates, and it's about 40% of what we do 
in the stock indices. So you can see that the uh, the real play here, uh, money, big money goes after the notes and the bonds. So we're interested in this. And the fact that these have not been able to uh, rally very much since that time tells us that uh, it looks like it wants to go a lot lower. We've been uh, making lower tops uh, over the past year uh, in the Treasury notes, which tells us that rates should be uh, you know, starting to go higher. Whether this is going to be related to inflation or not, you know, no one really knows the answer to that, but we will uh, find out more as we go through uh, you know, the rest of the year. Whether the Fed is going to do something dramatic, more dramatic than they've already done, we'll have to wait and see. But they've already got interest rates pretty much as low as they're going to get uh, from a you know, commercial bank standpoint. And if you look at Europe, you know, Europe has negative interest rates. So it's really a uh, not quite negative, almost. But it's, uh, you know, they're really priming the pump here for something. And whether that comes through with... Uh, uh, inflation, we'll have to wait and see. And we've already had this big move in gold, which I'm going to cover uh, when we come back from the break, because I wanted a little bit more time, you know, to cover that. I did want to show you a, a chart that I, I think is just a, a beautiful technical picture, and that is the uh, IBB. This is the ETF for biotech stocks. We made a, a slightly higher high uh, earlier this morning. We backed off a little bit, but the beauty of the technical part of this chart is the fact that. Uh, the, you know, that it came down exactly to the 786 and 61% retracement back on April the 14th. That's where you have a three major ratios coming together, and it really makes it, uh, you know, makes it very, very important that this is where the cycle should stop. We've got a caller from uh, uh, Florida. Kevin, are you there? Yes, I want to look at PRKR, a lot of activity today, and I went ahead and, and jumped in and... Uh... Okay, let me let me stuff? add that to my list because I, as you probably know, I am not a, a stock. P R K R. Mm -hmm. P R K R. Okay, what is the name of that company? I have it's a yeah. It's an over-the-counter company, correct? Yeah. Okay, let's see if I can Parker get the data. Vision, I believe Parker or something. Oh, this is a. Uh, did this have a huge gap? Yeah, I'm they showing, turned down for some things today and. It, it dropped in half? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Holy cow. That's <laughs> but somebody had ruled on in, uh, in Qualcomm's favor, whatever. I just thought it was a oh. fine opportunity. So. Well, I, I will tell you this. It's better to buy it today than it was Friday. <laughs> that, that's, <laughs> that's the only thing. Sure. I wouldn't touch this with a 10-foot pole. Uh, it's already doubled in price since you bought it, if you bought it on the open. Because it's gone from a dollar and a quarter to two thirty, so well, that's I, I uh, made twenty four cents. I I, I bought uh, it at uh, two bucks. Okay. And uh, well, I'd just be really careful here because anytime you have a gap, you have a really, really, uh, uh, really big problem. But the other thing is, this is a very, uh, very low price stock. And if you went back to last October, you notice that it went from eight all the way down to two, and then rallied back to the sixty one percent retracement at six. So this is a this, yeah, this is, is a wild stock, play, so you don't I, want it to go below zero. So yeah, buying I, it at two is not a bad idea. Exactly, and I, I just really uh, I look at it just something, uh, uh, just I'm buying just the number. The company is irrelevant. I mean, I'm sure it's worthless, but the uh, I well, think that risk. other people are going to. When, when I bought it at two, I, I was thinking everybody's going to be jumping in now, and they did, and it brought it to two and a quarter. So I'll probably just bring the register. Okay. Thanks for calling in, Kevin. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors.
If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter. And if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mobile.com in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I've posted into Tiger TV the Dow Jones transportation average going back to 1896 uh, just to show you the long-term patterns that are here. Uh, we're making a massive three drive to a top pattern here in the Dow Jones transportation from 1999 to 2007 uh, to where we are right now. How much higher it's going to go is anybody's guess, and mine has certainly been wrong. So it, to be, it looks like we're getting ready to uh, getting ready to uh, make a move uh, to the downside. But when it starts, and if it starts, uh, remains to be seen. But this is a massive pattern that uh, deserves our attention from a technical standpoint. What's interesting about this is that if you take a look at this chart, uh, you'll notice that in 1987 when we have the crash, what that looks like compared to the rest of the, to the, rest of the market, the crash that we had in 1987. Uh, folks, that was such a terrible day that uh, I just can't, it, the memories of it still haunt me to this day. And I was on the right side of the market. But I was afraid that, you know, we were going to have one of those situations where the brokerage firms were not going to make it. But uh, Mr. Greenspan came in and bailed everybody out. So it turned out to be the best buying opportunity uh, of that decade, as a matter of fact, other than 1982, of course, which uh, was under Volcker's uh, regime. So the, the transportation is still making this thing. I know everyone tells us it's different this time. But frankly, uh, I'm not so sure. Uh, in fact, I'm 100% sure that it's not different this time. It's just that uh, I'm presently wrong, 
I'm not in the market right now on the short side. I tried it a couple times. Uh, one time I broke about even. The other time I took a very small loss. And so what I'm waiting for now is to see if we're going to uh, you know, turn sometime this week, and then we'll be able to look at it. I wanted to uh, show you what's happening with the uh, Chinese market because uh, there's a lot of news about how things are going in China. And as you can see, going back over the last two and a half years, that this has been in a very, very uh, strong bear market. That We had one big Gartley pattern in January of 2013, and then we've had lower tops uh, all the way through here, uh, including a head and shoulders pattern. And so that, uh, you know, that's basically what the Chinese market looks like. Maybe this is the thing that's going to explode to the upside and take the rest of the world uh, with it, like they've been trying to tell us for the last four or five years, but in fact, I don't know if that's the case. This is just a, a market that, uh, it's an ETF for the Chinese market, FXI, and it is very bearish. Uh, we just completed a Gartley uh, just recently at the 7,886 7, level. Now, I wanted to cover the emerging markets uh, also because uh, I heard a comment today uh, about the World Cup. There was a gentleman that said there was a strong correlation to people teams losing in the World Cup and the relationship to the stock markets. Folks, I, I finally figured it out about the World Cup, how that works. For every team that wins, there's a team that loses. So if one is positive, the other is negative. It's just like in the stock market. For every buyer, there's got to be a seller. So it's the same thing. So I don't know where that guy got his statistics, but uh, that's not the way to go. An interesting statistic that I uh, keep in mind, uh, if you go back and look from 1885, when we first started getting really good data from the uh, stock exchanges that were published in the New York Times and later in the uh, financial press, the number of up days in the market versus the number of down days in the market is nearly equal. It's like 50.5% versus 49.5%. So there's almost as many up days as there are down days. Now we have periods in the market like we're in right now in the stock market where we've been up basically uninterrupted since February with virtually no correction. I believe this is one of the longest periods where we've gone without a 10% correction in market history. I'd have to check that fact, but I know we're very, very close if we haven't already broke that record, so we'll wait and see. But if you'll notice here, the emerging market uh, ETF is also uh, in a down move. It's completing a, a beautiful ABCD pattern, and it also has the time parameter. In other words, the distance between A and B is perfectly equal to the C and D move, so that tells us that you know this market it's giving us an indication that it's ready to uh, make a pretty good uh, correction. Uh, to the downside. That's primarily what we're looking at when we're watching the uh, that with uh, with the uh, emerging market. Now, I wanted to um, I wanted to spend a little time here with uh, gold and silver. We'll start out with the gold and silver index because I really believe, folks, this market has signaled that I'm going higher. Uh, it's just a question of when and if. And uh, I'm more I'm more concerned about when than I am if because we came out of that bottom. Uh, very, very strongly uh, in the XAU that made it, uh, the 786 down there at uh, 85. Uh, the low was uh, 82 and a half, and now we're trading up about uh, 25 percent at the uh, 95 level, which uh, me to me means we're just going to consolidate here for a few days and then back off and go a little bit higher. If we look at gold on the long-term weekly chart. You'll notice that we had some very significant 25-week cycles that bottomed down there near the um, 786 retracement around 1245. And the, the thing that's important here is the fact that we came out here really strongly now two weeks in a row. Yes, uh, the move that we had Friday, uh, I believe it was Thursday or Friday? It was Friday, Thursday. Thursday's move, I believe, was one of the... Um, Biggest moves in the, in the past year and a half. There was one other move that we had uh, way back in October of uh, 2013 where the market moved $72 in one day. We had a, a huge outside day, but we had a $55 move uh, in this one. And uh, it's beginning to look like we're starting to, to see something. Now, I'm monitoring the open interest and the volume. And believe me, there's no indication that there's anything really big happening over here. There's not a big a big surge of buyers into the gold market. 
maybe they're all buying cash gold. I don't know if that's the case. It's not reflected in that open interest. But from the exchange point of view, there are not a lot of traders coming into the market, either from the short side or the long side. So that leaves us with a situation where we have to rely on the charts. And that's what I rely on anyway, because that's the sum total of all the buying and selling. If prices go up, there's more buyers. If prices go down, there's more sellers. That's, uh, you know, that's pretty much uh, you know, the bottom line of what we're looking at. Now, in the currency markets, uh, we are in the, uh, we're going to take a look at the euro here because uh, this is, uh, you know, how this is the largest vehicle for trading in the world by far. And as you can see, we've been in a pretty strong downtrend since we made the butterfly top up in uh, 2008. We've had uh, several uh, major corrections during that time. The last one that we had is the weakest of all three, and it looks to me like this market is ready to uh, roll over. The question is we really need it to get below the 134 level, and we're trading around the 136 level right now, so we need it to get a couple hundred points lower. We were down the whole month uh, from May the 6th to June the 6th, and then since that time we've had a little bit of a bounce uh, in, the, uh, in the euro telling us that it's so oversold that uh, we have to watch this bounce carefully. My feeling is we might get up to the 137, 137.50 level, and that will probably be all we'll get for a rally if, in fact, this euro is as, uh, as bearish as it happens to, uh, that, that it happens to look at. Now, the other market that is at the moment of truth uh, from a technical standpoint uh, is the, uh, the Nikkei Dow. Uh, and as you can see, that's had some really beautiful patterns over the past year and a half. And uh, we are now completing a big uh, Gartley pattern up here at the 15,500 level in the Nikkei Dow. That also completes a head and shoulders pattern going back from last uh, May to the high we made in December to where we are right now. It's a very symmetrical head and shoulders pattern. And uh, the right shoulder where we are right now is much lower than the left shoulder. So that's telling us that this market has a potential to really accelerate to the downside. However, if we get above uh, another 600 points in, the Dow, in this uh, Nikkei Dow, then I would have to say this chart is completely wrong, and we probably could go a lot higher. Remember, folks, in 1989, the Nikkei was trading at 39,000 and change, and the, the, the bet on the street was not was when it's going to hit 40,000, or if it was going to hit 40,000, but when it was going to hit 40,000, it never did. It topped on Christmas Eve, 1989. I happen to remember that very vividly because I was uh, involved in that particular trade. And uh, we have the same situation now from our pundits on, on Bloomberg and TFNN and some, not TFNN, Larry, slow down, CNBC, and are telling us that, you know, 17,000 17, in the Dow is a foregone conclusion, which it might be. I don't think it's anything more mysterious than the Dow at 15,000, 16,000, 14,000. It really doesn't make that much difference to me on round numbers, but the press uses that as some type of a, a move to make us think that that's where we are. We've uh, got the Dow is uh, up, uh, excuse me, down about 27. Uh, the NASDAQ's up a little bit on the day. And the, the S&P is down just a fraction, so there's nothing to, for the, the bulls to be afraid of. But I, I will say, and I'll keep saying this for a long time because I know it's going to happen because it's happened to me too many times before, is when they start to take this thing down, folks, there's not going to be enough doors in the corral to get all the cattle out. I can tell you that. I've been in that situation before, so... Uh, when this thing finally does break, it's going to be uh, Katie bar the door. We're going to start seeing volatility uh, just coming out of the woodwork, and you'll see fear like you haven't seen it before. This is what history has told me after looking at these charts for 55 years. I've never found one that went up forever. Uh, you know that's the you know that's the bottom line. None of them ever do. The question is when, and we're just waiting to see if in fact this is going to be. Uh, uh, well, I think we're getting close, but I thought that back in December too. So we'll have to uh, have to wait and see if that's going to mean very much or not. Now there is one particular currency that deserves our attention, and that is the Japanese yen versus the U.S. dollar, because the correlation here uh, to the Nikkei and the Japanese currency is about 90%. So uh, we have been at the 382 retracement 
in the Japanese yen versus the U.S. dollar, the 101 level, for 15 weeks, folks. F 15 weeks, we've only made a 38% retracement after the high we made in the late fall of last year. That is truly an amazing statistic. Try to go back and do a little homework to see how many times you've seen something like that occur where the market would react only to the 382 and stay there for so many, so many weeks. That usually means its market wants to break out to the upside, but it could also be a massive uh, you know, distribution. We don't know. It has to come out of 101 on the downside or 105 on the upside, and then we'll know. But, folks, if we come out on the upside, uh, you want to be able to find a place to try to get long the yen versus the dollar because this thing could really move. Remember, the old-time high on this was back in uh, December of 1989 when the Nikkei was at 39,000 and changed. The yen was at 360. From there, it went down to 75. And if you'll remember, our, our, our stalwart leader, Tom O'Brien, was saying king dollar at that time. And he was recommending, you know, to buy the yen, to sell the yen against the dollar. And, of course, it's reverse of this chart, but that's what, what happened was the market just took off uh, to the upside as the market, uh, as the yen started to, uh, you know, rise, excuse me, to drop against uh, uh, the dollar. So this is what we're watching in the yen. Uh, the breakout here would be 105 and change. I'm also looking to see if we have any really strong day in here where the market maybe goes up 100, 150 pips to give us a tip-off that there's a possibility of a, a move up. Now, we don't have open interest figures that are reliable for the currencies. The reason why is the amount of currency trading that goes on at the uh, CME uh, in Chicago is uh, a fraction. I mean uh, uh, probably a thousandth of a percent of what goes on in the Forex market. So you don't really have any indication of what going, what's going on there because the, the, the 13 banks that report the data for Forex, they don't share that information uh, about who's, you know, who's got their positions on, which shouldn't be a big surprise to anybody. That's uh, the main thing that you want to keep in mind, that uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a big private boys club, but believe me, those numbers trade very well uh, either intraday and also for daily. So... Uh, it's a very good technical market as opposed to some of these others that uh, have very little liquidity like live hogs. And the hogs aren't too bad, but, you know, there's some of the others that are uh, very, very low in liquidity and makes it difficult, you know, to put a larger position on. That's, uh, that's the way it looks like uh, from my opinion. Another currency, one of the uh, big five uh, of the G7 is the uh, British pound. And as you can see, we've been uh, gradually going higher here. Uh, we need the pound to get to about 173. That's about 200 pips from where it's trading right now, and that will complete a massive ABCD pattern at that point. And uh, if that occurs, then we should see a beginning move in the um, pound versus the dollar because we did make a bottom down here last year at around the 145 level, and since that time we've rallied all the way up to the 170 level. So it's telling us that... Uh, this move is most probably getting very, very tired. The market is very, very overbought under any circumstance, but what you have to do is understand that these markets can stay overbought and oversold for a long period of time, as by looking at the S&P and the Dow Jones. Okay, we'll be back. Dow down about 25, S&P down a fraction. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. 
Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex box spreads. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, Unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Up next, the Diagnostics Trading Hour with Daryl Martin here on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, we've had a request to take a look at the German stock market. That's the DAX index, D-A-X. Uh, it is very, very similar to the S&P 500. It trades at a much smaller volume. Uh, and a uh, number of players open interest than we have with the S&P, but it trades absolutely beautifully uh, from a technical standpoint of following the patterns. Now, if you take it a minute to look at this chart that I posted here in the TFNN, you'll notice that we made the big ABCD pattern that occurred back on uh, March the 15th. That was the big cycle bottom that we, that we had at that time. The time down in the move was uh, very, very similar. The number of days down, it was ABCD almost to perfection. And then we've now completed an ABCD uh, on the upside, making it a butterfly pattern up around the 10,000 level uh, in the DAX. Now, the DAX has been above 10,000 about four or five times over the last several weeks, but has not been able to uh, close above it. And at the last part of this trade, the last two weeks, we've actually formed the uh, expanding triangle known as the reverse point wave where you have the one, two, three, four, five points, uh, each one, one, two, three, four, five, with five being the highest, making it a three drive pattern. And it's also known as the expanding triangle pattern. And it is one of the more positive, one of the more 
positive expectations of any pattern that we have. It's better than 80% probable that it's going to be a top. But in fact, if it doesn't, you know, all bets are off and this thing could really go. Now, today's low in the DAX stopped right at the 786 of last week's low. So we need the DAX to get a below uh, 9850, and that would tell us that we would probably get ready for some more to the downside. But we've been up for so many days in most of these markets that they're so overbought that, you know, it's not a question of when the currency or when these uh, corrections are going to occur. It's uh, it, it, it's a, not if they're going to occur, but it's when they're going to occur. So we'll see uh, if it starts uh, today or tomorrow. But the P index dates, uh, the cycle dates were uh, the 22nd, which was Sunday. And we have another big one on the 26th, which is also the uh, date of the new moon. And as we know, the new, the, the new moons have been very, very accurate over the last year, uh, better than 7 out of 10 times of picking either a high or low. But we're five days out. So anything could happen uh, between now and Friday, you know, looking at these particular ones. I, I think uh, most of the folks that are, you know, listening to TFNN are interested in gold and silver. We really need to watch uh, the gold and silver because it could come out of here uh, with a lot of gusto, and we could see things in gold that we haven't seen for a very, very long time if the world starts to uh, pick up on, you know, buying cash gold or even buying futures. I think there's more business going on in cash gold than there are in futures because people want the you know the physical delivery of it. I know that's what the uh, the major countries do, but uh, private specs use the speculative vehicle of the CME, which are the futures contracts, which are great to trade, but you can't uh, you can't put it in the safety deposit box. You have to have the physical gold. Uh, to do that, or physical silver. Silver needs to get above the uh, the 22 level. It's trading around 20, around 2090 per ounce right now. It needs to get above 22 dollars per level, 22 dollars per ounce, and then I would think that would be a, a really good breakout. But it it held major support down here, you know, made a little bit lower low, whereas gold didn't, and that was the first indication that maybe something was happening. And then we had a pretty good run up since that time. Very overbought right now. So the correction here needs to be uh, watched very, very closely. The grain complex has uh, had a little bit of a rally and has given all of it back. So there's really not much uh, to do here yet. But we are watching for a potential uh, to buy the corn. I, my last chart that I want to point in here uh, into Tiger TV, and we're leaving, is the Christmas corn chart. And you'll see we're going to get one more chance at this double bottom. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, folks, and may God bless.